Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today, let us discuss about one of the most important and common zoonotic disease in India, that is malaria. You all may be knowing that it is a parasitic infection. It is very common in our country. The organism which produces malaria, causes malaria is Plasmodium. So either Vivax, Falciparum, Ovale or Plasmodium malaria. These are the four important organisms which can produce human malaria. It spreads mainly through the vector that is Anopheles mosquito. The incubation period happens in uh, like uh, it happens in uh, female Anopheles mosquito then uh, sporozoids are injected to human and it grows in liver. So most of these uh, patients who get uh, mosquito bite they have a symptomatic period maybe it is around uh, uh, two to four weeks then patient develops all the symptoms when the parasites release from the uh, RBCs. So until the erythrocyte stage, patient will not have any clinical finding. Once the erythrocyte stage happens and it breaks the RBC, dies the RBC, when they come out, patient develops all symptoms like fever, chills, rigors, everything. So this is the life cycle. I am not going to the life cycle in detail. So mosquito gut some uh, some part of the life cycle happens then it enters human body where the sporozoids in liver is converted to merozoids then trophozoids in rbc schizoids and they are released from the rbcs again merozoids re enter the rbc and the life cycle continues so whenever the rbcs are breaking and this uh, 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 the the parasite come out that produces fever chills and rigors. Now fever with chills and rigors is the most important clinical finding in malaria but you, you should understand that it can happen even in urinary tract infection, lobar pneumonia, pus somewhere in the body, all these conditions, infective endocarditis, they are all you can get similar finding. So fever with chills and rigors are not the only uh, like uh, not only seen in malaria, it can be seen in various other conditions also. But classical finding in malaria is fever, chills, rigors, severe sweating and that occurs periodically. Every third day, fourth day, that depends on the uh, release of the uh, parasite into the blood. Now depending on the organism, sub-organism, the clinical findings can vary. Like if you see the uh, most important thing, one is Vivax and Falciparum. Periodicity of fever in Vivax is every third day. Malaria, it is every fourth day. Falciparum, it is any time. And uh, other things, I am not going to the details. They are all, uh, they are all uh, self-explained in this chart. But one of the important feature that you have to see, the number of mirosoids released per infected hepatocyte. That is very, very high in Falciparum malaria. That, that is one of the reasons for this malaria is a very complicated type of malaria. That is uh, because of the number of uh, parasites released from each cell is very, very high when we compare with malaria or Vivax or Ovale. So that is one of the features. Now, Falciparum is otherwise called as pernicious malaria, malignant malaria. So many features are there because the clinical findings are malignant type of clinical finding in Falciparum malaria. Whereas in other types of malaria, they are all benign malarias. They have fever, chills, rigors, some hemolysis. But here, there are multiple reasons uh, 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 in uh, Falciparum malaria which can make the malaria more complicated. Multi-organ dysfunction syndrome is very, very common in falciparum malaria. One of the reasons we have already seen that previous slide, the number of uh, parasites released from the hepatocytes are very, very huge in uh, falciparum malaria. And this malaria affects all types of RBCs, whereas Vivax malaria affects only young RBCs. Here, it all, it affects all age group of uh, RBCs. That is very important. Then another problem is cytoadherence. You can see that in, when you are seeing falciparum malaria, that enters to the RBC and some sort of membrane protuberance can happen on the RBC membrane. 
that's uh, rbc stick together and even that the clump can stick to the wall of the blood vessel like that it can produce sequestration and block in the microcirculation so that produces multi organ syndrome and the number of rbcs lie uh, produced in each cell is very very huge so the sequestration of rbc or hemolysis is also very high that's why falciparum malaria is more complicated than any other type of malaria now this is called as cytoadherence or rosetta formation there is a feature of falciparum malaria that can block microcirculation so you can see here blood vessels uh, in the blood vessels rbcs can clump together and they can block the microcirculation this is called as rosetta formation this is the major problem in falciparum malaria which can block microcirculation and patient develops multi organ dysfunction syndrome so since it is uh, uh, complicated malaria here you get all types of multi organ dysfunction syndrome features patient can have uh, uh, cns involvement so their gcs can be low they can develop uh, gtcs generalized chronic chronic seizures then patient can have severe sweating weakness multiple convulsions can happen because of the cns involvement patient can have acidosis acidosis various features are there one is circulatory collapse anaerobic metabolism second thing is uh, there is lot of lactate produced by the parasite and the mi microcirculation block so lactic acidosis is one of the important feature of uh, uh, falciparum malaria hypoglycemia is very common because malarial parasite itself utilizes uh, sugar and uh, hepatitis can also produce hypoglycemia uh, the, even uh, the patient who is uh, on quinine quinine is one drug which is used for malarial treatment that is a, a insulin secretagogue that itself can produce hypoglycemia so in malaria various reasons are there for uh, hypoglycemia but hypoglycemia is a main problem in falciparum malaria severe anemia we have already seen that large amount of parasites are produced in the rbcs they lyse the rbc so hemolysis is a major problem in any type of malaria but it is maximum in falciparum malaria so severe ma uh, anemia is very very common then uh, like any other multi organ dysfunction syndrome here also uh, blood vessels to kidneys are blocked that can produce uh, uh, microcirculatory problem in the kidney and it can produce uh, renal uh, shutdown jaundice is very common it may be due to hemolysis initially then it can become hepatocyte injury that is also common chronic malaria can produce polycystic or uh, gallbladder stones after some time now pulmonary edema or ards it can be seen in any type of uh, infections later later part of any infection you can get ards here also you can get because the microcirculatory leak in the alveoli can produce uh, fluid in the alveoli that can produce ards or non cardiogenic pulmonary edema significant bleeding may be due to thrombocytopenia initially then later part of the disease it can uh, patient can develop disseminated intravascular coagulation that means ptnr will be elevated apdt will be elevated fibrinogen levels are low patient develops multiple thrombus inside the uh, blood vessels to lies that uh, consumption coagulopathy happens so many things can happen patient can develop dic shock is the uh, uh, one of the important feature of falciparum malaria it can be due to uh, uh, volume loss microcirculatory leak and volume loss uh, second thing hypoadrenalism is very common sepsis that is also very important gram negative infections are always associated with falciparum malaria so that itself can produce septic shock so that is also common and parasitic index also very very high in falciparum malaria we have seen why it is like that because the release of number of uh, uh, parasites released from rbcs are very very high now cerebral malaria or coma that is also characteristic feature of uh, falciparum malaria again this is also due to microcirculatory block in the uh, brain it can also be due to convulsions post convulsive loss of conscious hypoglycemia also can produce loss of consciousness or coma hyperpyrexia also can uh, seen in many patients we are uh, putting the treatment on the opposite side you can read that convulsions uh, like any other convulsion you have to treat with lorazepam phenytoin phosphonatoin like that hypoglycemia treatment is dextrose 
severe anemia, you can try blood transfusion and FFP, but remember, most of the time, initially it is due to hemolysis. Folic acid is also a very important part of treatment in this type of condition. Uh, DIC, you have to treat with FFP and cryoprecipitate. ARDS, uh, mechanical ventilation or uh, BiPAP uh, with IPP is the treatment for that. Now, acute renal failure, most of the time it is pre-renal uh, cause because of the hypovolemia. We have to treat with fluids. But if it is uh, due to microcirculatory block, uh, we have to treat the original disease, then only patient improves. Then other treatments are all are same like uh, other condition. One condition is algid malaria or shock gram negative septicemia. So that is very, very common in uh, uh, calciparum malaria. Salmonella infection, that is uh, endric fever, that is also very, very common along with calciparum. So in that condition, you have to suspect a gram negative infection and you have to start uh, antibiotics like third generation cephalosporin would be a better choice. Now, clinical features in other malarias are not very important. Not very important means uh, they are not very severe. That is a, uh, that is a uh, uh, characteristic feature of other types of uh, malaria like Vivax, Ovil or malaria. They have mild fever, hepatitis B megaly, mild hemolysis, but relapses are very, very common in Vivax. So, that is because of the hypnosoids in the liver. Now, there are some terminologies we should understand as a medical student. One is relapse. Relapse is the recurrence of disease after it has been apparently cured. In malaria, true respond, relapses are caused by reactivation of dormant liver stages of parasites. That, that means these parasites are sleeping inside the liver cells, that is hypnosoids. Any time it can come back after many days of the treatment. So it is very common in Vivax or Avail. But whereas recrudescence is another type of uh, lapsing malaria, a repeated attack of malaria is due to the survival of malarial parasite in the RBCs. That is even after treatment, this patient is not completely treated with the proper uh, regimen. So it can come back, that is recrudescence. So we should know all these term, terminologies. Now investigation part, that is very important. When you have suspected malaria, a thin smear and thick smear is very important. Thick smear can pick up demonstration of parasite in the RBCs. You can see here, uh, ring stages are seen in uh, falciparum, uh, vivax, malaria, oil. And uh, for identification of species, uh, species, it is thin smear is better than uh, thick smear. So both thick smear and thin smears are important in malaria especially when the patient is having high degree fever, chills and rigors. If you take a blood uh, sample du during that fever episode, the yield will be very high. So that is also very important. Now there are other investigations we do in malaria that one of the most important investigation what is available everywhere is QPC for MP, a malaria parasite that is quantitative buffy coating uh, in that uh, with acridine orange dye we can pick up the uh, parasite and that can easily diagnose malaria. Another investigation is uh, histidine rich uh, protein 2 uh, uh, and plasmodium lactate dehydrogenase test. These all tests are there, but gold standard test is always PCR. Like any other infection, PCR is the gold standard test for malaria. But the commonly available test is QBC for MP or peripheral smear. Now, QBC for MP, the details are given in the slide. We are using acridine orange fluorescence uh, dye that can, uh, that can be picked up by the parasite and it can be easily picked up by your uh, microscope or whatever it is. Now, once you diagnose malaria or if you have a strong clinical suspicion of malaria, we have to treat the malaria. Initially, previously it was chloroquine. The early generation of uh, drug in malarial treatment was chloroquine, that is 600 milligram base we used to give, followed by 300 milligram base early, uh, at 6, 24, 48 hours. Total dose is 1500 milligram base. That is because many tablets are chloroquine sulfate. In that chloroquine sulfate, 250, 150 milligram is the base of the uh, like uh, tablet, that is chloroquine. 
So after chloroquine, we used to uh, treat the vivax malaria with primacin 15 mg per day for 14 days for curing the hypnozoids in the liver. But nowadays chloroquine resistance is known everywhere in India. So we are not using this drug. The next drug will be artesunate. It's a Chinese medicine, Chinese herbal medicine extracted from Chinese herbal medicine in has to derivative. That is artesunate. You can give 120 milligram start, then 60 milligram per day, six days plus sulfa drug with pyrimethamine as a single dose that can be given or we can go for cunane also but nowadays cunane resistance is also very well known in India so it is better to go for artesunate tablets or injection cunane 10 milligram per kg body weight every six hourly for five days followed by pancidar that is three dose of pancidar can be given it is given in mild falciparum malaria alternative drugs are same like artesunate RT ether, RT meter, all these drugs are available or atovacuin, progranin combination also can be given or mefloquine can be given but these all drugs are resistant. So better to go for RT sunate or RT meter or RT ether. These are the drugs of choices nowadays. Now if the patient is having severe malarial infection, he cannot take oral or you require to give IV, then RT sunate or quinine plus doxycycline or clindamycin can be given. Artesunate is the drug of choice nowadays, uh, especially in uh, first trimester of pregnancy also. This is the drug of choice because quinine is a very good drug. Two important problems. One, quinine has got a lot of interaction, drug interaction with other drugs. Second thing, it can produce hypoglycemia. Third problem, it can produce, uh, uh, it can produce a lot of arrhythmias like closer uh, easily point is. And the last problem is the resistance. Nowadays, quinine resistance is well known in our country. So, we don't use uh, this drug nowadays. We better, better uh, go for artesunate. Artesunate dose are 2.5, 2.4 milligram per kg start, then followed by 2.4 milligram per kg at 12th and 24th hourly, then daily. So, that is a treatment uh, nowadays we are giving for our malaria treatment. It can be combined with doxycycline or clindamycin to prevent resistance. So, so far there is no major outbreaks of uh, uh, artesunate resistance, but even then we can add doxycycline or clindamycin in severe cases to treat suspected artesunate resistance or to prevent artesunate resistance. Both we can add these drugs, but they are not clearly indicated. Now, there are other drugs like piperacin, Arterolone, that is a newer drug developed in India, that also can be tried. Now, chemoprophylaxis is another important uh, area in malaria because many of us may be traveling to an endemic area of malaria. So, if uh, previously it was chloroquine 150 milligram base tablet, that means chloroquine sulfate 250 milligram, uh, two tablets weekly, uh, or proguanil 100 milligram once or uh, two tablets daily. Then chloroquine resistance areas, it came that newer drug came that mefloquine 250 milligram one tablet weekly or doxycycline 100 milligram one tablet weekly. But nowadays we, we give 250 milligram atavacin plus 100 milligram progranil. That is a treatment for all chloroquine resistance areas. Now, tropical splenomegaly syndrome is one problem which is seen in the endemic area of, of malaria where there is repeated attacks of malaria that produces large spleen. One of the classical findings seen in malaria is a splenomegaly. But repeated attacks of malaria, the spleen size will be very huge. Anytime it can rupture also. So, tropical splenomegaly syndrome, once you see that, you should understand that that may be a part of malaria, chronic malaria. You can treat that with proguanil 100 milligram day for lifelong or folic acid 5 milligram per day. That also can be started to prevent hemolysis. So, we have discussed now about one of the important zoonotic disease that is malaria. Malaria is very, very common in our country. Most of the areas are affected by malaria and most of these malarias are chloroquine resistant, quinine resistant. Nowadays, the drug of choice is artesunate, RT ether, RT meter. You can add doxycycline or clindamycin along with this drug to prevent the resistance. Thank you.